So let's investigate a particular set of reaction diffusion equations. So here are the equations we'll look at. Here's the basic reaction diffusion equation. Again, U and V, two different types of chemicals. They each diffuse at rates A and B. And they have some interaction. They react with each other as given by this function F and this function G. And here's a particular function that we'll look at. <coughs> f of uv is u times 1 minus v minus 12, and g is 16 minus uv. So we'll fix this particular type of interaction, and we'll experiment with different values of a and b. And we'll see that an interesting range of patterns can result. So we'll do that by um, using a, another JavaScript program, another program that's at the Experimentarium Digital, uh, this is written by Mark Monticelli, as the Anon Equation uh, or Anon Attractor program was. Um, a great resource. There are lots of really good programs there. So let's check out their um, reaction diffusion or Turing equation program and see how it works and have some fun with it. So here's the program we'll use to. Um, look at the solutions to some reaction diffusion equations. These are um, often called Turing structures after Alan Turing, who was the um, mathematician who first came up with this approach to pattern formation in the early 1950s. So this is a page at, again, the Experimentarium Digital. Uh, it's a great resource, lots of JavaScript programs for dynamical systems and other aspects of math. A link to this program, as usual, is in the um, section called Links to Programs in the uh, right-hand navigation bar on the Complexity Explorer site. So here's the program, Structure is Deterring, and <coughs> here are the two equations, same ones that I presented in the lectures. And remember that A is the diffusion constant for U, which is the uh, activator and B is the diffusion constant for V, which is the inhibitor. Those are the two uh, parameters that will uh, vary as we do these experiments. And then F and G, those are interaction terms, and those stay the same. All right, so let's scroll down to the program, and let's take a look at what's going on. All right. So first, note that um, uh, the initial condition. So the reaction diffusion occurs on the square, and the um, initial concentrations are um, randomly distributed across the square. So what we're looking at in red is the concentration of the activator. So where the red is the reddest, that means there's a high concentration, and black would be a lower concentration. So um, initially, A is set to 3.5, and B is set to 16. And um, if we start this, it will um, solve the equations. And so this is a dynamical system. Remember, there's time in here. And so what we'll see is um, that this will sort itself out fairly quickly into different regions of black and red. So I'll hit start, and it wiggles around, and it eventually makes some fuzzy spots. And you can see the spots are more or less stable. So we have this stable pattern, these structures that emerged from um, a uh, uniform distribution with slight variations. Let's watch that again. So I'll hit reset. Every time I hit reset, I get a different initial condition. So these are chosen um, at random. And yeah, there's a little bit of structure here. Um, there's a little bit of clumping. But note that those clumps grow, and they form structures that are uh, quite long range. So let's do this again. And again, we see this sort of spotted pattern. Um, the pattern's fuzzy. Uh, I mean, that's the nature of the pattern. It's not a critique of the program. But I find that I try to bring it into focus so it sometimes hurts my eyes to look at this. Anyway, maybe that's just me. All right, so this particular setting, uh, the programmer uh, Mark has called this guepa, which, uh, which is French for cheetah in English. Cheetah, uh, uh, 
one of the big cats of Africa that has spots. So um, let's see. So we can change these parameters with these slider bars. And if we do that, let me see, let me hit reset and then start. And the patterns have a different character depending on the values of A and B. And remember, these are just the relative speeds, or the, sorry, the absolute speeds, the diffusion rates of A, the activator, that's what we see, and then B, the inhibitor, which isn't plotted. Let's reset again. You can change this more. Um, let's reset. And interestingly, that, hopefully that didn't induce any horrible headaches, it doesn't always um, settle down into a, a stable or fixed pattern. Sometimes you get oscillations and so on. Let's try that again. So here we see these sort of big oscillations. All right, so note that it was, um, it has sort of organized itself into these flashing regions of black and red, but again, this is a deterministic, and in particular, it's a local rule. So local meaning that each individual site, individual uh, pixel or lattice square, however it's set up, looks only at its nearest neighbors in tiny region. Nevertheless, um, the entire lattice, in a sense, is capable of organizing. All right, so let me just say a little bit more about this before um, concluding and letting you experiment some. There are a number of other settings. Um, colony fan is end. Uh, Empreinte is uh, footprint. Labyrinth and grill. This is, um, I believe, hail, like the frozen rain. Let's look at that setting. So notice when I change to grill, it automatically changes these diffusion constants for me. I'll reset and start. And this typically tends to just lead to a small handful of little dots, which maybe look like hail. So I reset to a different initial condition, and the final state is different. It has the same character, just a few um, different little squares. But the exact location of those squares differ from run to run. Um, all right, let's see. Let's go back to Nguepa. That's the cheetah. And lastly, let me show you what this button does, painting. So right now, um, we're looking at the concentration of U, and it's just in shades of red. So very red means there's a lot of U. Um, very black means there's not much U. Uh, if we click on painting, then rather than be just red, it um, uses more colors, a, a full color palette. So let's see. It looks like the black regions turn orange. The red, oh man, it's a little hard to see. But the main point is there's some color scheme for um, going from U concentrations to some color. So it looks like black regions are orange. What previously was red turns into this sort of yellow type of thing. Yep, I, I think. So I mean, it, the point isn't so much exactly what these colors mean, but as you probably guessed, one can get um, even more exciting looking pictures out of this. So let's start this. And there we go. There's a um, psychedelic multicolored cheetah. Um, so here I am back at the um, starting configuration. Sometimes I find these programs get a little confused and the parameters A and B won't update, and so I just hit reload the page and then everything's okay again. So you can experiment, and I encourage you to do so by turning painting on and off and trying these different settings, Webar, Colony, Fin, Pantra, and so on. And um, you'll see there are a bunch of different patterns, and if you turn on the painting to make to, to color them, some of them look uh, pretty impressive. But to summarize, what we're seeing is that a simple and local dynamical system, the rule does not have any sort of long vision, it doesn't try to coordinate across the system, it just knows what's going on, um, how the diffusion is behaving, 
right at that particular location, at each particular location, that this local dynamical system can produce stable patterns. And moreover, this dynamical system is based on diffusion, and diffusion wants to even everything out. So chemicals in any sort of fluid, air, or water will tend to disperse. But this says that there's a reaction diffusion process that can hold these patterns together. And of course, it's not just chemicals that um, undergo diffusion. One could imagine animals undergoing some sort of diffusion in an ecosystem um, that might be not exactly mathematically the same as diffusion, but one could model it that way. One could also imagine ideas diffusing, spreading out um, across some sort of a social system. And this, what these results say is that even in the face of this sort of leveling aspect of diffusion, one can get stable spatial structures.